right arm in a motorbike accident a decade ago. Surgery brought back some movement, but his hand still has no function. So frustrated is Milo with his withered hand that he's now opted for a radical solution, elective amputation in favor of a mechanical prosthetic hand. I lived 10 years with this hand and it it's, uh, it's, it's cannot be better. It's, uh, the only way is to, to cut this down and, and I get a new arm. The procedure is being offered by Viennese surgeon Oscar Asman. He calls the work bionic reconstruction. When you see patients like this and their history of about, what, 10 years, like the, the patient will do tomorrow, uh, and you see that the hand function is non-sufficient for him, uh, but at the same time you know what an artificial hand could do for him, then the thought is very close that you think, well, why don't I just fit him with an artificial hand? Advances in bionics are being made all the time. This is the latest state-of-the-art prosthetic limb, but as you can see, movement is still fairly limited. Now, this is the next generation. It has far more flexibility. It's able to rotate and there's wrist movement too. The bionic hands work by picking up the very same electric pulses from the brain, which would control a real hand. These pulses are detected by sensors built into the prosthesis. Peter, could you close the hand? Great, and then... Last year, 24-year-old Patrick was the first person in the world to choose to have his hand amputated and a bionic replacement fitted, again here in Vienna. He lost the use of his left hand after being electrocuted at work. He can now quickly open a bottle and pour a drink and tie his shoelaces using the very same nerve signals he once used to control his real hand. Well, my reaction was, oh my god, I've got a new hand. I can't do uh, functions with, also I did with my normal hand with the prosthetic arm. And uh, I think it was very cool. I did not do things with my hand for three years and then you put on the new hand and one minute later you can move it. That's great. It's seeing Patrick's new hand that's helped Milo decide to have the operation. He checks into the hospital the day before the procedure, meeting with his surgeon for a final consultation. Did you sleep well last night? Yeah, very well. Like a baby? Like a baby, yeah. <laughs> Milo must also undergo tests to confirm his hand has no meaningful function. Come the morning of the operation and there are no second thoughts. Milo's mood is one of calm resolve. There's even time for a joke. It's like Grey's Anatomy, yeah? More again. But removing living parts of the body, even ones that are dysfunctional, of course, raises profound ethical issues. It's always difficult to make, uh, make sure in these cases that the patient uh, fully understands the consequences of their choice uh, and that they are fully committed to it uh, and that they won't regret it further down the track. Now, as the technology improves, we will eventually get to the point where prosthetics function better than people's original hands. And you may see uh, people with perfectly healthy functional hands uh, wishing to, to have a cybernetic replacement. Milo Rad is now, I think, 26 years old and he wants to go on with his life. To biologically reconstruct a hand uh, for him would be a never-ending story and uh, in the end he would still have a non-functional hand. So I have no problem cutting off his hand. <laughs> The surgery goes smoothly, although it will be several weeks before Milo will be able to try his new hand. So far, there are no regrets. How did you feel when you woke up and your hand's gone? Yeah, it's... I have any problems. It, it's, it's okay. I feel good. And I'm happy that it's over. And I look forward. 
Well, Milo won't be fitted with his bionic arm until the swelling subsides in a month or so. But joining me now is Dr. Bertolt Mayer, who has the latest bionic arm uh, hand fitted, although he didn't have his arm amputated like the two men we've just seen. You're, in fact, born without the left, exactly. without the left arm. Uh, now, what does it do? Well, it basically, it can grasp like a, a normal hand like this. You can, you can pick up objects moving all the fingers. Um, you can tell it to do different grip patterns, for example. You can rotate the wrist. Um, this actually goes all the way. <laughs> so you can That's basically very... screw in a light bulb without, without letting go. disorientating. Oh, well. Um, and you can send different control signals to it to make it do different things. So, for example, uh, you can tell it to park these four fingers and only move the thumb, which is very useful. So now these, so these four fingers didn't move, right? Just the thumb, right. which is very useful for donning and doffing clothing, for example. Um, you can set it back to moving all the fingers. What you can also do is you can tell it um, to um, only move these two fingers here. Um, so, so these three are parked. And that's very useful for, for picking up smaller objects. So for example, like here, like a, a pen, like like this. And, yeah, and right. how are you telling the fingers to do that? I mean, it's not through, it's nerves, muscles, what is it? It's muscles, it's muscles. It's, it's the muscle that was actually, that would actually be used for this kind of movement, if the hand was there. So this is opening and this is closing. And then there so, is kind of special So movement. are you, let me get this right. Yeah. You're saying, I want to pick up a pen. Yeah. Your brain is thinking, I want to pick up a pen. Yeah. And the, the, uh, this uh, action is, is being perpetrated or originated by a muscle somewhere just above your elbow. Exactly. Are you physically telling that muscle, or not physically, are you mentally telling that no. muscle you've got to move? No it's, no, it's fully proceduralized over time. It's, it's something that you, ha you have to learn over time. So at the beginning, when you first use a prosthesis like this, it's like, okay, I want it to open or I want it to turn, so I have to flex the muscle there so that it moves there. But over time, this intermediate step, completely goes away, it proceduralizes, like reverse parking, right? You don't have to think about how to do it, sure. you just do it. And that's how this works as well. So, so I am at a point uh, where I just, you know, think open and, and opens, just naturally, like you would with your hand. And there are lots of different settings that you can put this on. Right, so the, the four different, there's four different grip patterns that my hand does when I send different control signals to it. For example, it will park these four fingers and only move the thumb if I send three mm. quick consecutive opening signals to the hand. But there's, it can do many, many more, um, like a library of different grip mm. patterns out of which you choose. Am I right to think that this is one of, the, one of the good things that's come out of Iraq and Afghanistan, that so many very injured servicemen arrived back? There's been a great incentive to develop these better. Well, it sounds a little cynical, but yeah. as far as I know, this, this is the case. You know, these soldiers nowadays, they, are, they wear these body mm. armors that protect the vital organs against mm. injuries. So m many more soldiers come back alive, but with horrible injuries, especially amputations. So there is a surging demand for high-tech prosthesis, both in the States Just watch, you know, you're holding your hands together, you're touching your hands as if, yeah. it's, as if it's a normal... Hand. Absolutely. Would you trust it enough to do something like, supposing one of your friends had a, had a baby? Yes. Uh, would you trust it enough to, to cradle a baby? Well, y yes. I recently became the godfather. My f friend of mine gave birth to her first uh, daughter, and, and, and yes, that's how I, that I hold the baby. There, there is pictures of me cradling the baby in this, in this hand. I know a man who actually changes the diapers of his baby with, with one of these. What do you make of these guys we saw uh, on camera there who were having operations to, 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 to yeah. uh, surgically remove a natural but completely malfunctioning hand and replace it with one of these? Well, in, in these very particular cases, I can understand their, their feelings and their decisions. Because from, from, from what I understood is that their hands were almost without any mm. function, almost like sure. a numb piece of, 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 yeah. of, of flesh. And that these people were also in, in psychological, physical agony. And, and to do away with that, um, to have something not only more functional, but also something that will take away the suffering, in this particular case, I think it is a reasonable decision to provide them with, with something that offers them more But you can function. see where this is going. The suggestion was made in the film that eventually you might be able to devise hands that are better than a human hand. I know. And I think that the, the, sing, the, the 
the sole argument that an artificial hand has more function than an existing hand, that alone cannot be enough to justify the amputation of the hand. You can already do something that none of the rest of us can do. Go on, do it. Get, yes. get your party trick there. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> okay, thank you very much indeed. And that's all for this week. From all of us, goodbye.